Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. How are you today? I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Today I have for you a Spill the Tea mini tag. And I was actually tagged by Sarah Kay, and I will link her information up there or up there. I can't remember which one. I think it's up there. <laughs> I will link her channel there so that you can go check her out. Um, on my page here, it says that the original person was Liv Loves Her Makeup. So I'll see if I can find that for you also. But anyways, it's a four question tag, so it should be short and sweet. But if you know me, like you know me, it's probably not going to be, but I'm going to try to keep my answers concise and condensed down. So we'll see how that goes. I also saw another friend of mine, Amy Lynn, do this tag as well. So I'll go ahead and link her video also. So let's go ahead and get into this tag. Spill the tea. It took me the longest time to even know what that meant, but I get it now. Um, if you don't know what it means, then Google it. Basically just telling the truth or finding out what the truth is. So there's four tag questions as I said. The first one is, which video were you afraid to post on YouTube and why? And it's funny because the one that I was afraid to post should probably be the one that I was the happiest and proudest to post. Um, and that was my cross wall video. And the reason I was nervous about posting that is because a Christian in this world <laughs> isn't so easy anymore. And let me explain that. Being a Christian has a lot of connotations. A lot of people consider Christians to be extremely pressuring on other people, um, shoving the Bible down their throat, all those kind of things. And all of those things, I am not. Um, I am not religious, but I am very spiritual. I have a relationship with Jesus. I serve Jesus in my life the best that I can. And so I'm not ashamed of that. And it's impossible for me to keep that out of my videos. And so as you can see behind me, I have a cross wall and I had so many requests about it. Well, it's impossible for me to tell about my cross wall without telling part of my testimony. And so that's what it ended up being. And it meant something to me. Obviously my testimony means something to me. And the significance of those crosses means something to me. But I didn't want to be, number one, judged. I didn't want to scare people off who are afraid of religious people or who are afraid of Christian people or who have had a bad experience with a church or with religious people who were using high pressure tactics and those sort of things. And so um, it wasn't about what someone was going to think about me. It was about, this is precious to me, and I'm putting myself out there. And that's a really big way to put yourself out there. And so once you do that, you've drawn a line in the sand. This is who I am. And there are some people who are going to accept that, and there are some people who are not. And honestly, that's irrelevant to me because it's not going to change that part of who I am regardless. So I was hopeful that it would be well received. I was hopeful that respect would be given and it was, but I wasn't sure that it would be. Um, even people who are not Christians, I respect their right to choose and to learn and to pursue what they feel is right for them. Of course, I hope that they will find Jesus, obviously, because that's who I believe in and that's who has turned my life around completely. And so obviously that matters to me, but I had to find my way to Jesus my own way. And so does everybody else. And nothing that I say or do is going to force that to happen. But living my life in a way that shows that I have the Holy Spirit living inside of me should be enough for people to see Jesus in me. If it's not, then I'm not doing something right, <laughs> in my opinion. So that was a video I was afraid to post. Um, I'm really glad that I did. I leave it up because it's part of who I am. 
And the people who are coming here to figure out who I am, they have to know that that's part of me. So I'm glad that it's still up there and I'm proud of it. Number two, as your channel grows, do you find it more difficult to stick to your original opinions? Well, considering that my channel is makeup based, um, there's a lot of opinions floating around. And even in my little group of people that frequent my channel, there's hundreds of different opinions. And as long as you're willing to let other people have their own without trying to make them feel like they're wrong for having it, I think opinions are a good thing. And I think I really respect a lot of people's opinions. Um, on makeup because we ordinarily like the same thing or we have the same kind of skin tone or, you know, so I, I actually pursue people's opinions on things because that's how I make decisions on what I'm going to buy. And so on my channel, I am going to be honest about how I feel about something. Am I going to spend two hours ragging on a product? No. Am I going to sit there and complain and whine about a product for a long time and just drag it through the dirt and rip it apart? No. And I'll tell you why. I'm not going to do that because somebody's heart and soul and blood, sweat and tears went into creating that. And I'm not going to be the person that's going to tell them that it's wrong or bad or terrible just because it doesn't work for me. Because there's probably a million people that it does work for. And so I always keep that under consideration. Um, and that is that just because it doesn't work for me, doesn't match me, doesn't work with my skin, doesn't mean that it's not going to be great for somebody else. All I can do is give my honest opinion and that's what I hope from other people. The channels that I'm drawn to are the channels of people who are honest. You know, win, lose, or draw. Good, bad, or ugly. Whatever it is, I want to know your opinion, and you're probably saving me some money if you're telling me about something that didn't work for you, particularly if you're somebody who we share the same tastes or a lot of the same tastes. And so, yes, to answer that question, yes, I have stuck to my original opinions as far as how I'm going to do that. Now, has my opinion about a product ever changed? Yes. Not because somebody else convinced me to feel that way, but because I can continued to use it, tried it in different ways, found another way for it to work for me. And there have been times that my mind has been changed, absolutely. And so, you know, as far as that's concerned, yes, my opinion has changed. But overall, the premise of my channel and the way that I want to operate this channel with integrity and honesty, it's never going to change. <laughs> it's just not going to. Um, I can't live my life in a way that's false. I think that I was kind of a person who hid away from the world for the majority of my life trying to project out a front of something other than I was. And once you get past that, you can't go back. And so what you see is what you get. What I say is what I mean. Um, you can be sure that what I'm saying is the truth according to me. And that's, that's what you're going to get here. Number three is someone leaves you a crappy, I'm putting in a different word. Someone leaves you a crappy comment that isn't relevant to the video. Do you delete it or respond? Um, you know, I had a really big talk with myself before I started my channel, and I think that's the reason why I dragged my feet and why I was hesitant about starting it. I said to myself, Sherry, can you deal with the hate comments? Can you deal with negative comments? Can you deal with people who are going to rip on your weight? <laughs> rip on the fact or try to convince you that you can't do makeup well or rip on your makeup looks or the way that you feel about certain make makeup products? Um, are you going to be able to deal with people who rip on you for being a Christian or your choice of church or your choice of spiritual whatever realm? <laughs> um, are you going to be able to deal with those things? Because if you're not, then you need to not do this. If you're not strong enough to do that, then you need to not pursue this. And I felt as if I was. I haven't had many. Um, I've had some trolls in live streams, but I haven't had many hateful comments or negative comments. But recently, I had some, and they were sexually graphic. Um, they were explicit towards me. And it just really kind of made me drop my teeth. I was like, huh, what? I took a screenshot of it and then de deleted all of them. I sent it to Becky, and I'm like, can you believe 
<laughs> that somebody would say this kind of stuff. And, you know, it, it always comes down to the fact that people are hiding behind a computer screen or a device of some kind. They can say whatever they want to. Sometimes it's kids being silly. Sometimes it's someone who's not well-adjusted mentally. Sometimes it's somebody who just thinks it's funny. It can be a number of reasons, but if my, the way I feel about me and what I'm doing here sways with somebody's opinion, then I'm not going to be able to hang here. And so the way that I deal with it is I take the little personal blow because it still does kind of sting a little bit sometimes whenever it's something really negative, but sexually explicit things and things that are absolutely not okay, uh, delete and off I go report you to YouTube and off I go and I'm not gonna worry much about it I probably wouldn't have thought about it again had I not had to answer this question but um I just delete it that way it's gone I'm not gonna sit there and reread it I'm not gonna sit there and nitpick myself about whatever it is that they said I'm gonna move on I certainly don't want it to remain there for long I don't want any of the people who love me to spend their time trying to defend me to this person and start a big battle in my comment section I'm not about that I have spent my entire life trying to have a peaceful well-balanced life and if I allow that kind of negativity and hate and being disrespectful to me and other people on my channel mm -mm, that doesn't fly with Sherry so Delete. Bye. <laughs> bye, Felicia. After all these years, I still love to say, bye, Felicia. <laughs> anyway, bye, Felicia. Number four, tell us how you feel about your channel currently. Are you happy? Are you not? Uh, I'm about to approach my first year anniversary on YouTube on June 19th. And so I never felt like I would ever back out. I never felt like once I made the decision and turned the corner that I would give up. I will admit that the changes with YouTube threw me for a loop, kind of kicked me in the gut and knocked the wind out of me for a little while. And my response to that was just to push back harder. <laughs> and in pushing back harder, I wore myself out. I overwhelmed myself. I made it where it wasn't fun for, for me to do it anymore. Uh, I had to back out for a few days at a time. I had to find ways to support other people and still maintain my channel, find a balance there. And that's hard when there's a lot of people that you love and a lot of people that you want to support, but there's only 24 hours in the day and 12 of those are working. And <laughs> four to six of those are sleeping when more than that should be sleeping. But there's only 24 hours in a day and I got really overwhelmed. It became not fun for me for a little while. And I talked to my friend Sabrina about it. Sabrina, the makeup mom, I'll link her for you guys. Um, she's one of my good friends here on YouTube and she's really such a good friend and listens to me. And it's nice to talk to somebody who is involved in, in YouTube as well and knows kind of the ins and outs. And she's been around for a little bit longer than me. And so she's probably experienced some of these things before I have. And she said, you know, take a step back, Sherry. Remember what was fun for you. Remember why you started your channel. Remember the things that you did that you enjoyed and do those. And take the pressure off. You know, take the all these rules that you've made up for this off and just enjoy it and have fun at it the way that you did when you first started. And, and that was really good advice. And that's what I did. And so as for my body of work, for all the videos that are uploaded to my channel right now, I'm proud of it. And the reason I'm proud of it is because it shows growth. It shows growth in my makeup skills, it shows growth in my editing skills, my um, filming, being able to film without speaking in monotone or speaking in a whisper where you can't hear me or having music over blare it so loud that you can't even hear what I'm saying. I've learned, I've lived and learned on YouTube and I'm proud of the progress that I've made in a year. I never expect, I say that I'm a perfectionist all the time and it's kind of in jest because I, I don't expect myself to be perfect, but I do expect myself to make progress. And if I'm not moving forward, then what am I doing? If I'm not improving, then what am I doing? Um, and, and that's just the way I always live my life. I want to be a lifelong learner. I want to always be evolving and changing and growing. I, I feel like if you stop evolving and changing and growing, I feel like 
what's the purpose of being here? If I've done all there is to do, then what, what's left? Well, I'm not going to live my life that way. I'm always going to be curious. I'm always going to want to continue to learn. I'm always go going to want to grow. And I've noticed that the people that I have in my life are like-minded and like-spirited. They want to grow. They want to learn. And we learn and grow with each other, and that's a beautiful thing. But I'm proud of the body of work that I have on YouTube. I'm proud of the improvements that I've made. Do I want to continue to improve? Yes. Do I want my videos to be better? Yes. Do I not want to have 18 bloopers at the end of every video? Absolutely. But it all happens in time. It all happens along the way. One step at a time, one video at a time, one change at a time. And I'm really just enjoying the process. I'm enjoying it. And so as part of my year anniversary, I'm going to do a video and I am going to insert some of my first video. It's, it's cringeworthy and it's hilarious because other people watch it and say, it's not that bad, Cherry. But when I look at how my videos are now as opposed to then, I'm like, wow. I'm Donald Trump orange. I'm speaking in a monotone whisper. <laughs> I didn't know how to turn the volume up on my audio. I'm not going to keep going. It's, it's cringeworthy. And so you'll see. But overall, yes, I'm happy. I'm not happy about the changes that happened. I think it cut a lot of people off at the knees. And I think that was very discouraging for people who had worked really hard to get to a milestone that they thought was going to put them up to the next step and get them one step further to, you know, whatever's considered success these days. You know, I already consider myself successful because I even started the channel and because I've maintained it. And I've made three videos a week for a year. I think one week I didn't. It was Thanksgiving. You know, I'm proud of that. That's consistency. That's commitment. That's doing what I set out to do. And so I'm really happy with that. Um, you know, my gripe is with YouTube. Not with the other people. Not with myself. Um, just the fact that things change so dramatically. And it changed the climate. It changed the dynamic of interaction and, and made, made it a little bit more competition and or more competitive and people kind of, people that I wouldn't expect becoming cutthroat and kind of only worried about what they were doing for themselves and not caring about other people. It kind of brought out a little bit of an ugly element that I really hadn't experienced. So, um, but in a nutshell, overall, as far as me and my performance and what I have produced and my body of work here, yes, I'm happy. I will be happy as I improve, but I'm happy right now. I'm happy with it. Um, and if you, if you didn't hear me the first 16 times, I'm happy with it. So that's the end of these questions. Thank you, Sarah Kay, for tagging me again. All the people that I mentioned will be linked in a card or and or below. Yeah, I'm getting new furniture so that things don't fall off my vanity just for me sitting here. I wasn't even moving or touching it and something fell down. I'm not happy about that. <laughs> But what I was saying is I will link in the cards and down below the people that I've mentioned in this video. And also, if I can find Liv Loves Her Makeup, I will also link her since she's the originator of the tag. And I will also leave this tag open for anybody who'd like to do it. I, I don't like, I really just don't like to name certain people because I will forget somebody. I don't want to leave anybody out. If you want to do it, absolutely do it. I think these are thought-provoking questions. I think these are good questions. I think it's good from time to time to examine your heart and your mind and see where you're at with yourself and see where you're at with your channel. I think it's only going to um, help you grow and improve, and that's, that's what I think 95% of us are trying to do. So... Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up and for you to subscribe if you haven't already. I ordinarily upload on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And when I do a live stream, it'll be on Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock p.m. Central Time. So that's when you can be looking for new videos from me. But until next time, take care and God bless. Bye, guys. Got a little sweet tooth for ya I'm looking for a bit of sugar Lucky me, it's my cheat day